everybody. Praise the Lord, house of blessings. Can you put your hands together for the king this morning? How many know that he's worthy and worthy of praise? Hallelujah. Come on, I need everybody to clap your hands real loud with us. Hallelujah. Come on, everything is possible for our God. Come on, God can heal us. He can be a blesser today. He is my God. He is the creator. Let's lift him up. Let's exalt his wonderful name. Hallelujah. Come on, Zion, sing the songs of praise this morning.
together. Find a praise partner. Find somebody to grab on and pull them this morning. Say, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Do I got any praises in the house this morning at 10 o'clock in the morning? Yeah. My Bible says from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same that the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will be in order to be praised. But I want to lift up the name of Jesus. The Bible says when there were two or three, certain and agreeing, that means believing on him, uh, trusting in him, having faith on him. Hey, we lift up the name of Jesus. We lift up the name of Jesus. Hey, we lift up. Come on now. We lift up the name of Jesus. We lift up the name of Jesus. I can't hear you, y'all. Come on, the devil's here this morning. We lift up the name of Jesus. 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 Say hi. Happy Sunday. Welcome to House of Blessings. Doesn't it feel good in here? It's so nice to see all of you guys here today. Thank you so much. And for those of you watching online, we appreciate you. Some of us have had a jam-packed weekend because we just have um, completed our VEA annual conference. And so I see a lot of smiling faces and that rubs off on the whole family, right? (laughs) All right, well, I have a few dates that you might want to take note of, and that's going to be May 26th. That's our next youth night. So if you are a youth, make sure that you come on down for that and you bring a friend. That, again, is on May 26th. Also, we have some fun for the whole family. On May 29th, we're going to be having Memorial Day at the park. Now, if you haven't been to that, It's when everybody comes on down and you guys bring your own barbecue, your own favorite dish, or your games. And and then we go and we fellowship with one another. We make our rounds, right? And we get a little taste of everybody (laughs) if they're willing to share. But um, yeah, so it's going to be a good time. There's also going to be games out there for all ages. There's usually volleyball, soccer, softball, and some water games for the kids. You know, something for everybody. So that's going to be a lot of fun as well. Also, on June 4th, we're going to be having our graduation ceremony. If you haven't registered already, please do that today or as soon as possible. Again, that is for kinders, elementary, college, and trade school. Now, another way that you can connect with us is also through small groups and growth track. Small groups happen once a week, and that's usually done, you know, in person, but we do have some online, and there's something for everybody, English, high school, young adults, Spanish-speaking, English, you know, something definitely for everybody. If you haven't found one that, you know, that you feel, uh, how could I say it, that, you know, um, is especially for you, guess what? You can create one. There's a foodie group. The, the, the opportunities are endless. So if you would like to start one, you can do that as well. Um, and then growth track is and then growth track is classes that connect you to the church, discover your purpose. You get to lead with those gifts and then serve on the dream team. There's so much talent here in House of Blessings and nothing, you know, this service wouldn't be possible without all of your talents. So we need more people on the team. Make sure you register. Uh, connect with us on social media and you can also connect with us in the lobby at the Connect Desk and visit hbconnect.church for more information. We hope that you enjoy this service. God bless you. Why don't you greet your neighbor? Give them a high five and a smile. And sit down. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I forgot to tell you to have a seat. (laughs) Amen, amen, amen. 
Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Amen. It's good to see you this morning. Good to see you this morning. Amen. Give a hand clap to the Lord. And the music was so good. The singing was so good. I mean, they might exhausted you. That's why you're so tired right now. No, come on. Amen. Amen. The music was good. The singing was good. Everything was good. So let's keep rejoicing in Jesus' name. Amen. We welcome everybody in Jesus' name. It's time to give. Give is so easy because the Lord established it the way we should give. It's very easy. It's very hard for those that wants to, well, do better than God. But God has established the right way to do it. So let's do what he already established as for our own benefit. It's not because he needs money. He don't need money. He doesn't need money. We do need money. Just tell somebody, I need money. Okay, then. If you don't need money, give all the money to me. We all need money. Amen. And the Lord established a way for the church to give the money back to the church. So it's very simple. We just give 100%, give 10% for the Lord. Give an offering for the Lord. Give fruits, fruits for the Lord. And it's very easy. It's very hard when we don't understand, but it's very easy when we understand and we do it by faith. Not because the Lord will give me if I give Him. He may not give me anything. And in any ways, I will give it to Him because it's established by Him. That's it. Very simple. So I want to pray for you that the Lord may continue blessing you and honoring everything that you do. Amen? Amen? So let's pray that the Lord continue honoring you in everything that you do. Not only in the economic, but in everything that you do daily in your life. Let the blessings of God be right there. In Jesus' name. Let's pray in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, we come before you. We thank you. We love you. We appreciate everything that you have done. Thank you, Lord, because you allow us to bless your name. We allow us to give with gladness. You allow us just to be part of these great blessings. Thank you, Lord. We bless every single family. We bless every single one. They give unto you. We ask the protection and the blessing for their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Give a hand clap to the Lord and let's give with gladness in Jesus' name. After you give, you can stand up and we can continue worshiping God. God bless you. How many know he deserves the worship right now? I said, how many you know that God deserves the worship? Come on, let me see those hands testify this small. Come on, if you're breathing, you want to throw those hands up as high as you can. Open up your heart to him. Open up your mouth as loud as you can. Tell him, you're my God. You're my Savior. You're my healer. You're my deliverer. You're my present help in the time of trouble. I wish I had two or three believers in the room. Come on, let him know that he deserves the praise. He deserves the glory. Sing with me now. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, my hallelujah belongs to you. I gotta testify one more time now. My hallelujah belongs to you.
again for the last time, my hallelujah, my hallelujah. Every day that I'm awake, every moment that I'm awake, yes, my hallelujah. No matter what comes my way, you still will be, yes. You never leave me, you never forsake me, you're always with me. That's why I love you. Thank you, Lord. We welcome everybody in Jesus' name. You may take your places. We thank God for everything that he has done. We are grateful to be here once again. And uh, I truly believe that the Lord is good. And he wants every one of us just to continue on. And yet ready for what is coming something is coming that everybody is saying is coming but everybody is thinking that it's going to take forever but I want you to know that it's closer than any other day it's closer so our walk with God and our relationship with God should be better today than any other day so we are so glad to be here in the presence of the Lord to build up our faith in Jesus' name. Give a hand clap to the Lord. It's fine. It's not a problem. Amen. So we welcome everybody in Jesus' name. We're so happy to have with us Brother Sam. Thank you. Come up. He moved to... San Diego, but he's back. Give me a mic. Yes, please. Thank you. I know you've been to San Diego, but the Lord is calling you back. I wonder why. You know why. Amen. Greet us. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's good to be home. This is my house, hallelujah, and in my house, hallelujah, the presence of the Lord uh, can be felt. Uh, in my house, uh, there is redemption. In my house, uh, there is healing. In my house, uh, there is restoration. This is my house. Uh, how many can say amen? amen. Woo, praise God. It feels good to be home, brother. It feels good to be home. I don't know about you, hallelujah, but I came to uplift uh, the name uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, and if you want to feel the presence, uh, you got to lift up that glorious name. Praise God, hallelujah. Well, uh, praise God, brother. <laughs> I apologize, brother, but... Ooh, it feels good, brother. I was about to run the aisles, brother, but I don't know if I can. I, uh, I am very happy to, to be here. I, uh, we came to visit our children uh, and uh, be with them for a couple of days. And uh, I'm joined by my lovely, gorgeous, wonderful, terrific, and fabulous wife, Irene. Please stand up. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. I am blessed. Praise God. And... Uh, so uh, I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, I ask your prayers for us there where we are in Escondido, and uh, you have a home there, praise God, but my house is here, <laughs> praise God, God bless you. Amen. Don't leave, we're going to pray for you, for you before you take off, uh, we believe that the Lord can heal you. The Lord can put everything where it belongs. Amen. Amen. So we know the only one that can put this body where it belongs is Jesus. So I want you to stand up, put your hand forward, and we're going to pray for Brother Sam. That way he, the Lord can 
place his power on him and his power can heal every part that is misfunction in his body in the name of Jesus stand your hand forward in Jesus name and let's pray Lord Jesus we come before you we thank you we love you we appreciate your name Lord we know that we belong to you you servant he's your servant we ask that you may intervene in his body in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ intervene in his body in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name thank you Lord thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you Jesus thank you Jesus in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God will do what he said he will do. He will not leave you, nor forsake you. He will be with you until the end. We believe that the Lord put his hand upon you. Believe him. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's receive Sister Cobb. She has a message for us. I'm going to ask everybody to remain in their places. We so close to the end. And sometimes we take it for granted what's going on. We think we got a lot of time. We don't have a lot of time. We have time to shape up and walk right. But we don't have time to be wasting or be, have time just to take it for granted and say, yeah, tomorrow. I truly believe that it's time today to get things right. The Lord brought you here today because something is missing in your life. You don't have to say amen. But I know that the Lord brought you here because He wants your life to be in accord with Him. So let's open our ears and let's open up our hearts and let's receive the word from God. Let's take what belongs to me because God is sending it to me. Because today is the day for me. It's not for nobody else. Take it what it belongs to you. Take it for you. And God will honor your faith. God will honor your decision at the end of the day. God will honor your walk with him from now until he comes. If you allow his word to be in you. In Jesus' name. Let's receive Sister Cobb in the name of Jesus. If you thank you, Pastor Cast Dr. Castro. Um, if you have your Bibles or electronics or whatever, <laughs> not we're going to look and those that are back there for the scripture, let's shorten it. We're going to Matthew chapter six. And we're gonna read from verse ten to verse thirteen. One, three. Thy king, let's all read it together. Thy kingdom come in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Let's read it together. And forgive, okay. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Verse 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Christianity can be summed up in just three words. Think like God. Think like God. We're in a kingdom, and the aim is, is to think like the king. So the, our king, 
enrobed himself in flesh and came to earth. In Luke chapter 11, verse 1, the disciples, which were followers, came to him and they said this. They didn't say, Lord, teach us how to speak. Teach us how to preach. Teach us how to get rich. Te you know, all those things. Luke chapter 11, verse 1 said this. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Just as John taught his disciples. Notice that. Lord, teach us to pray. Now notice, he was in a certain place praying. Now these followers have followed Jesus enough. And every time he came out of prayer, he did incredible miracles. And they associated power with prayer. Power with prayer. Everybody in here desires to know God. We cannot know him outside of, number one is word, prayer. Put them two together. Prayer is vital. That's the title I put. Prayer is vital. And everybody under the sound of my voice, if you can speak, you can pray. It is vital to you. Now I want everyone to breathe in. Hold it. Hold it. I could go on for, you know, two minutes, three minutes. Now let it out. What oxygen is to you? Prayer is to the church. Without oxygen, you cannot survive. Because if, if you all held your breath for one hour, come on, what would happen to you? You would die. So imagine, brother, if I go weeks and weeks and don't talk to the king, there's spiritual death. Prayer is vital. When you read the word, that is God speaking to you. Amen. It's his instruction. When you read the word, it is God speaking to you. Amen. When you pray, it is you speaking to the king. Again, it's a travesty in Christendom. Do you realize the Muslim pray more than most Christians? When I was in Africa, I was in Ethiopia. And every morning, ah, and the, the, the call was going out for prayer. And people were coming in Ethiopia dressed in, the women were dressed in their white national costume. with They had the head scarves. What were they doing? They were going to prayer. Prayer is vital as oxygen. The Wesley brothers who built many churches had this to say about prayer. Without God, man cannot. And without man, God will not. God is waiting on you. We're not waiting on him. He's waiting on everybody to understand the true importance of prayer. Again, throughout the ladies' conference, my, my assignment was God talking about the word. God said, before I leave, I must, somebody has got to change. Prayer, you've got to make it a habit. I want to just quickly show you the importance, some of the points of prayer. When prayer is mentioned in the Bible, a lot of it, it's to do with Jesus. When you just read... It's not the Lord's prayer. That is not the Lord's prayer. That is God showing, teaching the disciples what manner, how to approach him. The Lord's prayer really is in John when Jesus prayed. It's recorded what he says. But we call this the Lord's prayer. And this is one group of scriptures next to Psalms 23 that every Christian know around the world. No matter which country I go to, if I begin to say Matthew chapter 6 verse 10, oh, and you begin to say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You have been taught kingdom. Now notice this. When he's beginning to teach them to pray, 
he told them, you're not going to hurt because of the amount of prayer. You know, the long list that you have. But when you pray, he says, find a secret place. Find a private place. You know, the word closet is used in the King James, but no one's going to go in their wardrobe or their, uh, what is, is it called closet here in America? Yeah, in, in England it's called a wardrobe. But you go into this private place. Why? Because you have time with the king. It's you and the king. You and the king. So he said, when you're going to pray, he said, when you begin to pray now I've been asked sister Cobb does it matter whether I stand whether I walk whether I kneel the older I get is the less I kneel I'm being serious because this knee hurts I just had a procedure on it so what do I do sometimes it's not the position of your body because you can be kneeling and your mind is nowhere near God When I went to Israel and to the Wailing Wall, this is how they were going. Rocking back and forth. You could be rocking back and forth and your, your, your mind might be on your problems. It's where your mind and your heart is that is important about prayer. So he said this. When you come to prayer, bring your praise. David said it this way. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart, I will enter into his courts with praise. So you bring, when you come to the king, you bring your praise. You bring your thanksgiving. Everybody in here has a reason to be thankful for. What? You're alive. You survived COVID. Hundreds of people throughout England, hundreds throughout the world died through COVID. If it's one thing you got to thank him for is that you're very much alive. Now, he said, listen to this, and you, I got to get your attention here real quickly. In the Lord's Prayer, he said this, our Father, which art in heaven. He denotes and say, it's not your earthly father. My earthly father was simply a sperm donor. Why, Sister Cobb? I really never knew him. And when I finally remembered talking with my father was the day that I was getting married. He, this man called me and I said, I said, I'm sorry, but who are you? He says, I'm your father. And um, I talked with him. I remember when he was very sick, I heard I had no... Nothing in my heart against him. I, I called him. I said, I hear you're in, the, you're in the hospital. My dad lived in Canada. I am not an American. I, I grew up in England, for those of you that do not know this. But I do live with an American husband in Cincinnati, Ohio. Right? <laughs> but I'm still British. I'm still under the kingdom, the king. I said to him, I heard you're sick. I would like to pray for you. He said, oh, no, not now. I got people in the, in the room. But here's the thing. When he says, our father, which art in heaven, is important. Because if you are like me, you've never truly had a dad that was a father with emotions and, you know, was in the home with you. It damages you. You, you are disappointed. But that's why he's saying, when you're praying, don't. Compare me with your earthly father. Because that's not the way I am. Now the King James, listen to this. Then you go on. Our father, this is the one in heaven, the king. It says, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. He's never said on earth. In earth. Now think about this. As it is in heaven. Thy kingdom done in earth. Everyone say in earth. in earth. We miss this. The Lord, the Lord showed me this revelation a couple of months ago. In earth. Everyone say in earth. in earth. Pastor Castro has taught you the kingdom. Kingdom. We have a king. You are the citizens of the king. Okay. You are the citizens of the king. Now, when he said thy kingdom come, he's talking about his kingdom. Thy, kingdom. thy will be done in earth. His will must be done in earth. But all the time I was reading this, I misunderstood it. 
My Bible tells me that in Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2 and chapter 3. In chapter 1, God created the earth. He spoke it into existence. That's the God you serve. Every plant, every flower, everything you see, he spoke it. The sun, the rain, the snow where I live. He, he created everything. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and in the earth. But when it came to making man, he stooped down and picked up dirt. You are earth. You are dirt. And when you looked at Adam, when he formed Adam, everything else he spoke appear. Up here. See, Pastor Kasher was saying, God don't need your money. And that's right. Because the currency of heaven is not money. The currency of heaven is the spoken word. The currency of heaven is the spoken word. Now think about this. He spoke everything to existence. But when it came to man, he formed you out of dirt. Earth. And then when he breathed into Adam, then Adam became a living soul. Watch this. So what God is trying to tell us, he is wanting his kingdom in you. You are earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth, in you, in you. I am the kingdom. You read it. It's all throughout the Bible. See, we are just because of a building a church. We are the church of the living God. When somebody talks about the church, it's not the building. It's you. The Bible says Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's why when you get the Holy Ghost, you now, God is now in you. So when you speak, you should be speaking like God. When you pray, you're praying to him that has spoken. Because why? Because in earth, that's me. I'm kingdom. When I, I should be a reflection of the king. If I was wearing a certain skirt called a kilt. Has everyone, anybody ever heard that word before? A kilt? What country would I be representing? Thank you. Perfect. Therefore, when we go to prayer, we are, we are the kingdom. Why? Because we should have the very image of Christ in us. When I go to London... I, would, I, I grew up there, and I, I take Uber to go to my mom's house. When I get in the Uber, the Uber driver, every one of them said to me, this is what they say to me, Oi, what part of America are you from? I'll translate, what part of America are you from? I said, I'm not from the United States. Yeah, you are. I said, why do you, because you sound like one of them. I said, I am not an American. I said, I'm just as much British as you are. But what he was saying is, he said, my speech betrayed me. I do not sound like somebody from England any longer. I'm asking you, when we come to the king and you come to prayer, the king will recognize your speech by your... Okay. Wow. <laughs> Harness me, Lord. <laughs> Prayer is vital. I want to just give you a couple of um, understanding more about prayer because I, 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 I will be respected to the time this morning. There are several, many, many, many things throughout the Bible about prayer. Prayer, again, is you talking to God. Amen. Have you ever been on your knees and you think your prayer is going, it's bouncing back on you? Let me say this. This is the trick of the enemy. Because your king, listen to me, your king, number one, never sleeps. 
The Bible says in Psalms 121 that God never sleeps. He never slumbers. Okay, you got to remember that. See, these are things we need to know. He never sleeps. So when you kneel in prayer, when you sit in prayer, when you talk to him in prayer, you bring your praise to him. You bring your thanksgiving. You got his attention. You got to remember that. But remember what that scripture says. Thy will be done on earth In earth, in me, as is in heaven. So when you're talking to him, your speech is going into the atmosphere. And there is at least, we know by scripture, by 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 1, that there's at least three words that describe three heavens. There are more than one heaven. There is more than one heaven. But the third heaven, by 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 1 to 10. We recognize Paul says he was caught up to the third heaven. That's where the throne of God is. So your prayer has to go through the atmosphere. And Satan's kingdom is out there somewhere. And that's why Jesus is saying don't quit. Keep praying. Because he's hearing you. But sometimes the answer is blocked. Coming back. I don't have time to explain this to you, but believe me, there are times God will send an angel to answer your prayer. Daniel chapter 9 and 10. Sometimes he will say yes, and the answer will come through. Sometimes he says wait, and nobody likes waiting. Your country is not designed for people to wait on God. When I go to England, I will wait nearly an hour in a bank, and they never apologize to me for waiting. You come with me to England, you can sit at a table in a restaurant in 20 minutes and they're not going to apologize to you. Why? Because they learn to wait. You wait for the bus, you wait for the train, you wait to be served. It's wait, wait, wait. In America, it's rush, rush, rush. So we take that same attitude with God. He's king and the king never rushes. Queen Elizabeth Never waited on anyone. The only time the queen waited on someone was when Princess Diana died. And the country said, the the prime minister said, Queen Elizabeth, you better get outside Buckingham Palace. and You better wait for her body to come by. Because the the country was very just angry at the royal family. Because they felt that they planned Princess Diana's death. So she waited. But a king never. He's king He's king, but he's trying for me to tell you today, church, everybody, everybody has a direct entrance to the throne of glory. In the, in the book of Hebrews, in the book of Hebrews, in the book of Hebrews, it says this, when you understand who God is and that he died on a cross for you, then You come boldly to the throne of grace to find mercy and help in the time of need. you got to have a prayer life. You have to have a prayer life. That that heightens, that brings your relationship with God. He said, Sister God, but he doesn't answer me. Sometimes we go, God, could you do this for me? Would you say much? Would you do this? God, would you save my child? Would you save this? And it's a long Christmas. Christmas list and then you get up and walk away and he's saying they didn't give me a chance to even answer back God is always speaking I was in Union City in October and as I stood in the church God said my people think I am not speaking he says I'm speaking all the time when you see the trees he's speaking to you When you see the Pacific Ocean, he's speaking to you. When you see the sunshine, he's speaking to you. When you see the rain, he's speaking to you. When you see humanity, he's speaking to you. God is always speaking. In closing, again, prayer is as vital to the Christian as oxygen is to you. Without oxygen, you're going to die. God is saying, I want my people to talk to me I want my people to come to me again prayer is you speaking to the king in in revelation chapter 5 verse 8 we're not going to read it I'm just going to tell you what happened they were in John the beloved was on the island of Patmos which means my killing 
and he saw into the heavens. And as they were talking, he was seeing things happening in heaven. And they asked, what, what are those vials? That's, a, that's an old English word. In other words, what are those bottles? They said, we see all these bottles in heaven. Vials. And they said, what are those vials? Listen to this, mama, grandma. They said, it's the prayers of the saints. You got a vial in heaven. Is yours empty? Because you're not praying for somebody. Now watch this bottle. When I keep filling it up and filling it up, sooner or later, what's going to happen if I keep filling it up? Sister, sister. It's going to overflow and that's when the answer comes. Listen, again, because of time, there is one more scripture. Again, the prayers are being collected in heaven. And when you pray, your prayer has a smell to God. Oh, he's smelling your prayer. I'll prove it to you. In Genesis 8, verse 20 to 21, really quickly, Noah came out of the ark. And it, Noah built an altar to God. And it said, and now build an altar to the Lord and took every clean four-footed animal and of every clean fowl or bird and offered burnt offerings unto the altar. Next verse, real quick. And when the Lord smelled the pleasing odor, your prayer has a smell. It's, it's important. I'll prove it again to you. Last scripture. Revelation 8 verse 3 to 4. I'll prove when you pray. It's Revelation. And another angel came. And stood over the altar. See that word again? Because when you pray, it becomes an altar to God. You want to know where I pray? I pray in my car at a lake. I pray in my car at a lake. You know why I go to a lake? Because when I feel like I can't break through it, and I see the animals, and I see people fishing, and I see the trees, I think, oh my God, you created all of this. It builds my faith. It said... And the angel stood over the altar. He had a golden censer. And he was given very much incense, fragrant spices and gums which exhale perfume when burned. That he might mingle it with the prayers. Your prayers are mingled. The prayers of all the people of God. The saints upon the golden altar before the throne. Let's move on. Let's go to the next. And the smoke of an incense. The perfume arose in the presence of God. With the prayers of the people of God. The saints. And from the hand of the angel. Don't tell me your prayer is not vital. It's vital. You must. You see, many of us pray when we have a problem. That should, that's not the reason for prayer. Prayer is that relationship with God. Keep praying because there's a vial in heaven. Keep praying because your prayers are mingling with a smell. And he's saying, Gabriel... Micah, can you smell the prayer of my saints? But if you don't pray, you ain't got no smell. And the smell changes you and the problem that you're praying about. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Please stand. lift up our hands to heaven. Keep talking about our prayer. Can you find your place in prayer? Yes, the
time. Times are coming. And times are surrounding us. And the only thing that we see is hard times. We come before God. We got to see what He sees. And we got to see our God and our prayer. That way we can see what He sees around us. I like to know if someone in this place wants to see God. The way He wants us to see we see different things different things going on and sometimes we just focus on those things and we cannot see God in prayer even though we pray we don't see I like to invite you I like you to come to this altar and really take a stand before God and say Lord here I am I want to see what you see I want to see what's going on in my life I want to see what's going on around my life I want to see what's going on around my family I want to see you. I like to invite someone. Just one. It might not be this uh, this message. It might not be for you. You may be all right. You may be good. You may not have anything. But God is saying. Come close to me. I want to show you what's going on around you. I want you to see what I see. If you just lift up your hand and I start calling upon the name of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Sometimes we don't see what's going on because we're too busy seeing other things. But we don't see But what God Really, really want us to see It's right there It's right there Yes, Thank you for joining us today. If you want to stay connected, visit us on our website or hit the subscribe and follow button and share with a friend. If you want to give, hit the give button and donate today so that your donation can help spread the gospel all over the world. God bless you.